Paper was like gold in medieval times. I want tobacco. Sugar. That everything we thought we knew about the world might turn out to be completely wrong. If I eat sweets and all that, yeah, I'll get more fatness coming up. Because you can see the, the fatness there. Almost one million British school children are already obese. I eat salad. I'm allergic to salad. And every one of them is different. I'm tall, like a giraffe, because it's very tall. If I was the normal shape and size of a ten-year-old, I wouldn't mind. Channel 4 is following a group of seven overweight children on their journey towards adulthood. What do you think you'd like to do when you grow up? Um, be a five of them. Save people. Over the years, our children will be regularly assessed by a leading university as part of ongoing research into childhood obesity. But this is not a quick fix diet programme. This series is a chance for Britain's obese children to tell us what life looks like through their eyes. I put on weight really easily. So, like, I'll have. I don't know, uh, some chips and I'll gain a stone. When so many of our children are so big, what does it really feel like to be growing up fat? In this film, meet our younger children, who are just starting to realise that the food they eat can affect the size of their bodies. Seven-year-olds Libby, Lucas and Kelsey, and six-year-old Bethany. Hear what they think about food. I'll eat anything. I like to eat ordinary chocolate. Well, they do them big bars now, and I like that. <laughs> Their hopes for the future. Do you think you'll have a job? Yeah, I want to be a McDonald's server. And what makes them anxious? I worry about my goldfish. August. It's the summer holidays, and seven-year-old Libby is travelling through France with her mum for a reunion with her French pen pal. I'm going to see my friend Jessica and her little sister Amy. And how are you feeling about seeing Jessica? Excited. At home, Libby is a notoriously fussy eater and exists mainly on a diet of carbohydrates. So far, the only French food Libby will touch is baguettes. Oh, you push her over like that. As you do. Jessica's dad, Eric, is a chef and likes to cook fresh food from scratch. Eric, tell me, Wait. what are we having for lunch? Uh, nice uh, melon from the area, you know, supporting the French farmer. But Mum Tracy is dreading the meal. She knows how stubborn Libby can be about food. In England, I normally eat um, pasta and pizza and um, some dinosaurs and that's about it. She won't eat vegetables, she won't even try, she won't eat fruit, she won't eat beef, she won't try pork or lamb or anything like that at all. Thank you, thank you, no, thank you, thank you. Merci, merci. Mmm, mmm. Have some of this, mummy. Do you like it? She always does this. You can have some salad, Libs. I don't even like it. Well, Libby, stop being silly. Oh. Jessica, pass me an egg. And we'll have some mayonnaise. And then Libby mm. can have the egg and mayonnaise. I am not. Watch me, I'm not going to eat it. So that was fine. Mum, I don't oh, like cake. Good. Just try it and eat it. Bing, bing. 
I didn't want to eat the melon, the lemon, or the um, beans because I don't like them, and we don't have them kinds of things in England. Do you think you're fussy with your food? No. Does your mum think you are? Yes. Yeah. In summer, Jessica and Amy play in their pool every day. But I'm really worried, you guys, because I can't swim. You can't swim? No. You can. Turn round. Right, now as if you're going down a ladder. Libby's not used to regular exercise. Hold it down, but you can do it. So she's not confident around water. Come on. For Mummy. Yeah, okay. Pull up, Mummy. She annoys me so much <laughs> because she wants to do these things and when it comes to actually doing it, she gets all nervous and frightened and scared and it's silly because she knows <laughs> that's not going to happen. <laughs> In Bradford, seven-year-old Lucas lives with his mum on the same street as his grandparents, his auntie and her children. My cousin Davy, Joshua Mason and Joshua's six, Reese is nine. And where do they live? Um, Reese and Joshua live there, six on six. And who lives next door? My grandmother and mummy. Every day, Lucas plays out with his cousin, Joshua. How do you feel after that? <laughs> well, bless. What's that, Lucas? Sweets. Where did you get them? Uh, from Nanny's. Sometimes I'm uh, loud um, on the weekends. I don't um, eat sweets often because I'm nearly on the diet. When it comes to Lucas and his cousins, it's a constant struggle for him. They can't understand why he can't eat as much as everybody else. They do everything the same together, they run around together, they play together, they eat more or less together. But Lucas is still the bigger one. Is it difficult not eating things like sweets? Yeah. Why is it difficult? Because um, if I eat sweets and all that, yeah, I get more fatness coming up. And if I don't, my fatness goes away. When we've been spending so much time together, generally we're having to give in to him. It's not fair on Lucas saying no. Sometimes I let it slip, obviously. I've got to do, I can't be too hard on him as a kid. So what do you want to do when you grow up? Be a policeman. Do you? Yeah. Why? <sighs> to arrest people, to help them. As Lucas's extended family all live nearby, it isn't just his mum who feeds him. Tonight, Grandad's making tea. Tosh's bake, I call it. Oh yes, this is uh, <laughs> this is my special. <laughs> you think it's fattening, but it's not. It's not fattening by far. As soon as it's ready, I put this red, red Leicester on top. Leave it in for five minutes. Take it out, serve it, and gone. <laughs> Drop it. Yeah, come on! I'm missing tea. Starving. Looks yummy, yummy. No waste. I don't need waste. I'm starving. So what's it like, Lucas? Come here. Yep. It's beautiful. They all like my cooking. <laughs> Lucas loves it special, yeah. He has to have the last uh, little bit, you know. To say the size of him, he doesn't eat a lot. He doesn't eat any more than anybody else. Do you think Lucas and his cousins ever kind of like come in and get bits from the cupboard when you don't know about it? They, they, they do, yes, because they're kids. Yes, they do, yeah. Yeah, where's me? Because I'll always, I'll always buy myself a treat of some kind. Where's it gone? Don't know, Grandad. With so many family members to call on for food and snacks, it's hard for Mum Kelly to keep an eye on what Lucas is eating. 
he can do stuff very slyly. He can go on to my sisters and say, my mum might fed me. And she'll be like, Kelly, have you fed him or not? Thank you, Bernard. Back home in London, Libby and mum Tracy continue to battle over food. Pasta, madame? I don't have to say that. Cheese, madame. Tracy thinks Libby's attitude to eating has led to her daughter having digestive problems and being three stones overweight. Mm, I don't like to eat fish fingers, oranges, plums, apples or pears. Any veg? Hmm? I'm going to break on here. Do you want some? No. I've got chicken. Is that a vegetable? Yes. Tracy is a single mum and works long hours as a full-time manager at the local medical centre. It is really difficult. You're so pressured with time. I try and be patient with her, but obviously if you're working all day, you just want to get home. I certainly don't need sort of like the, what am I going to feed her? If I ask her to try this, is she going to eat it? Are we going to have an argument over it? I think I've given in to her too much over the years with food, haven't I? Can we go on a different subject? I say she gets really annoyed as well if we carry on talking about food. <laughs> because she knows that I'm right at the end of the day, that she should be trying lots of varied food. So okay. Shall I get a bit stricter now then with food? No, you're strict already. <clears throat> food, I mean. No. Like if mummy just does one dinner. No. Why? No. Why though? Tell me why. What's the reason? I don't want to do it. Yeah, but that's not a good enough reason. I wouldn't do it though. Libby has got a very strong personality. It's quite difficult sometimes to sort of chastise her and, and make her listen to what I have to say to her. Do you think you make it difficult for mummy when it comes to food? No. Can I answer that one again? What do you think, then? What do you think? I think no, because if I tell her to do something for me, she does it. I like smoked ham. Tastes like bacon, but it's not bacon. Bacon has fat on it, and it's very yummy. I like the fat. End of the summer holidays. For our kids and their parents, there's the frantic dash to buy new school uniforms. At two stones overweight, seven-year-old Kelsey from Hertfordshire already has to shop in the teenage section. I hate shopping for school uniforms. It's soul destroying buying clothes for And this year's harder than last year because she's gone a bit bigger, so we're going into the older children range. She's trying on 11 to 12 bottoms and 12 to 13 top now. And go over there so I can see the length. Just let me see the length, please. It's all right, we can cut the bottoms off Mom. them. Right, turn around and show me your bottom bit in it because I want to see how tight... No. Yeah, they'll have to do. At home, Kelsey likes to help herself to snacks. We've got sugar on. If you can see, it looks like glass, but sugar. <laughs> oh, yummy sugar. Definitely sugar in there. Kelsey's very reliant on food. If I let her, she would just eat and eat and eat. I should be more like cracking the whip all the time, but I don't want to be one of those mums that says, no, 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 no. When she was a baby, Kelsey and her mum had difficulty bonding. Melissa believes this is what's led Kelsey to comfort eat. It's an instinct to nurture your child, and part of nurturing your child is feeding your child. Tonight, for tea, it's Kelsey's favourite, beef casserole. I love it. It says dumpling in it. I love it. Dumpling I save last. <laughs> I have loads on yeah, having that's one. Mine, mate. You know, I, like <laughs> I kinda know it's my fault that she's big. 
she's got my genes and we're not always perfect eaters, do you know what I mean? I just think it's our metabolism. Kelsey's mum, Melissa, has struggled with her weight all her life. It's a milkshake, but it's not proper milkshake. It's made with water instead of milk. What's it for? For a diet to help her get skinny. I've yo-yo dieted over the years. I've tried Slimming World. I've done Weight Watchers. Every diet there is. It is really nice. And it works, I hope. But Kelsey's big sister, Charlotte, is sceptical about her mum's approach to weight loss. All it is is a tiny little sachet combined with water. She's not actually eating, she is drinking. So she hasn't eaten in, what, over a week now, which is just... There's obviously something wrong with that. It can't be healthy to not eat. I think Kelsey must, like, pick up on it. I think, especially if mum loses all this weight on this diet, then she's really going to start to focus on Kelsey's weight, and that I don't think that's good for Kelsey. Before the new school year begins, Tracy's attempting to kickstart Libby into a more active lifestyle. She's booked a one-off session with a personal trainer. People on the street just tend to look at her, and I, I can imagine what they're thinking. They see me and they see her, you know, and it's sort of two fatties together walking down the road and they're so judgmental. Like, you know, how can she have a little, a little fat child? Does she not feed her properly? Does she not exercise her? Come on, again. <laughs> yeah, keep going, I'm coming for you. I'm coming. Yeah, are you really tired? Libby's never been physically active. <laughs> As a baby, she had a heart condition. Yeah. See, I worry as well with her heart. That's why I don't push it. Like to get she still wants to, yeah, she still wants to. As regards to physical exercise, um, I suppose it's work, uh, not enough hours in the day. I know it should be a priority. Um, I just, I, there's no excuse, really. I just haven't had the time. Not Come on, my... run and touch me. Not All right, my... walk and touch me. Come on. I think it is partly me as well, because I am big. I won't go out and do the physical activities, maybe with her. I just wanted to, I suppose, be like other kids, really, and I think because she's that bit bigger um, and it's noticeable, I just, I don't know, I feel really sorry for her. September and back to school. Lucas's mum, Kelly, isn't convinced the food is the only thing making Lucas obese. At three years old, he was taken ill with pneumonia and prescribed steroids. He's, he's always been big from then on. It's just got ridiculous, his weight. I do blame it on the steroids. At school, Lucas's best mate is Kian. Lucas is my friend. He's always there for you. And if you want to play with somebody, he's there. Uh, and he's... He's a big eater in life. He likes to eat a lot. How do you know he likes to eat a lot? Because every time I see him, he keeps on going for thirds and seconds. You want this one? No, a little bit, just a bit. Just a bit, Daddy. Is it okay? Yeah. You get a bowl of meals with pita bread and some salad. We provide fruit every day, fresh vegetables. We always have salad on. A lot of children are into vegetables. We just say, well, we've got to put it on your plate and then it's entirely up to you, but try it. Well, I, I, I eat my salad. I eat salad. I'm allergic to salad. I'd have eaten worms, always. But Lucas's dinner lady doesn't think it's school meals that are making children overweight. It's what they eat when they go home. I don't think enough cooking is being done. A lot of children tell us that they have takeaways every night. Yeah, one minute. 
In Gateshead, six-year-old Bethany looks forward to lunchtime. Do they talk about healthy food at school? Yeah, healthy food. What do you think that means? To make your bones go strong and healthy, and your teeth have healthy, and milk makes your teeth go stronger. Bethany, do you want carrots or cabbage, darling? Carrots. The North East is one of the UK's obesity hotspots. Bethany's head teacher, Mrs Steele, has implemented a new regime of healthy school meals. Broccoli's one of my favourites. I love broccoli. In terms of um, parents, you know, when you were talking to them about school dinners and yeah. the lunchboxes, I mean, what kind of, you know... That was how, fun. How difficult, how difficult was that? What kind of arguments did you have to have and how did the parents respond? It was very interesting when we were liaising with parents on lunchboxes and school dinners because we did have many meetings where parents weren't very happy and couldn't understand why we wanted to do it. But in the end, it's not how your child looks now, it's not what your child does now, it's what's going to happen in the future. We want to educate the children, and through the children, educate the parents. Yum, yum. Bethany's mum, Kelly, is one of the parents who's unhappy about the school's policy on healthy eating. The way the schools are going on about the food and stuff like that, I think it's wrong. The school dinners is very limited, very healthy food. I don't agree with it. I think people should just eat what they want to eat. If it's going to make them happy, eat it. When we were kids, we could eat anything we want, anything. Um, chips, which I used to love. Fast food's never done me any harm and never done my family any harm. We've all just, well, as you can see, I'm slim. They must have been doing something at school on healthy eating or something like that. And I picked out from school once and then... Yeah, that's it, healthy eating. And she came in and she says, she was like a bit upset about it and she went, Mum, she says, my teacher says I'm not allowed to eat sweets because they're very unhealthy for you. I says, I'm your mum. I says, and if I say you can eat sweets, you can eat sweets. I says, I don't care what anyone says. Yes, she is big, but when you're big, you've got, you look cuddly, you look, you look, you look well, you look better. Um, and that's the way I say Bethany. She looks well. You know, she's got colour in her cheeks all the time. She wouldn't be Bethany if she wasn't big. Parents will say that they were brought up on, you know, pizza, junk food or whatever you want to call it. I think the difference is the lifestyle. I think that, you know, years ago, children were out in the streets, they were running around, they were playing. Now they're in front of televisions and videos. When you come home from school, what are your favourite things to do? Sit and watch TV because my legs ache. I like doing the computer and playing with my games and playing with my cross stitch and watching a little bit of TV. I like laptops. What do you do on the laptop? I play all my games. Super Bees, Easy Town, Makeup and Pop Girl. What do you normally do at the weekends? Um, just watch TV. TV, TV, TV. Tea time at Kelsey's house. Oh, it smells nice. Mum Melissa is already experiencing dramatic results on her liquid shake diet. I've lost a stone in like a week, which is like, to me, that's phenomenal. And, and that just keeps me motivated because every day I get up and weigh myself, I've lost some more weight. And it's all good. I'm having the most salad. Are you? Yeah, I've done it. Thank you very much. Because you're 
Because you see, I do try. That's half fat cheese. The pasta's whole meal. And that's what we use any, you know, all the time. So, I can't, can't really work out why we're that fat. But when you're not here filming, we have a takeaway. On a Wednesday. So how, how often do you have to, be honest, how often do you have a takeaway? Um, now, once a week. Oh, that chummy. Kelsey's diet, it's not like it's complete and utterly unhealthy food. It's just she eats so much of it. I need a spoon. Forks are not good enough. I know Kelsey's size is obviously unhealthy, but when I was a little porker, I was cool with it. I didn't mind the way I looked because I had no problem with it. I was happy. I think I probably am still a fat pudding now, but I really don't care. <laughs> It's not like I want to be fat. I'm just easy with it. And I don't think I'm absolutely ginormous. Thank you. <laughs> Libby's mum works full time. So after school, Libby goes home with childminder Susanna to have her tea. We're coming, we're coming. Her mum, Tracy, finds it impossible to get her to eat any veg at all. Tonight, Susanna's made chicken and vegetable curry. You wipe your hands? I wipe yeah. my hands. There's one for you, darling. Okay. Eat how much you can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sometimes Tracy says, you know, Libby doesn't like this or that, or like fish fingers and silly things. But when she comes here with kids, she eats everything. I don't ask them what would they like for dinner. I just cook and either if I see they don't want to or something, they have no choice. They have to sit down and eat. Would you like some more sauce without chicken? Yes, please. But they eat it, don't they? Mm. Oh. Oh my. Oops. Hello. What are you eating? Curry. What are you eating? Curry. Oh. Right, Missy oh. Madam. You'll be eating curry when you go home next week. Okay? I'm going to pick you up from school. I'm going to do curry. I like it with Susanna's way, not yours. Mm. This is what I get everywhere she goes. I don't like it the way you do it. I'm amazed. Libby doesn't like chicken curry. Libby doesn't like it. Libby won't eat it. So as long as cooking is really nice and I love it. She made you some vegetables tonight. Do you know that? Yeah. What do you think? Um, I like the things she cooks for me and they're really nice. See you tomorrow. When she goes to friends' houses, she will sit and eat what they're eating, but she won't do it to me. And I don't know if that's because we're mother-daughter. She knows that, you know, if we have a little argument, she'll win. So it's a vicious circle. Why would I like you to be a bit more healthier? Tell me why. Why, why I keep going on and on and on like so I do. I don't be like you. No, I don't want you to turn it like me. Walking around like... Oh, when I, yeah, because I've been doing... <coughs> exactly, see? Because mummy's slightly heavier, when I do something, it makes me tired quicker. Why do you think mum wants you to be healthy? Because she cares about me. February. All our children are off to Liverpool, to John Moore's University, to have their first weight and fitness assessment as part of a long-term programme of research into childhood obesity. The interesting is to find out what our fitness levels are um, today because we, we don't do a lot of exercise, actually. Um, it should be good fun. It should be good fun for her. If she stays awake long enough. <laughs> I know she's overweight, but I just... To be told that there was something wrong overweight, yeah, that would worry me, but then I guess it would motivate me into doing more about it. At the university, Paula Watson is principal researcher in childhood obesity. While we've observed fatness to increase over the past 10 years, we've actually observed physical fitness to decrease, and that's regardless of weight status. Physical inactivity is actually a greater risk factor for cardiovascular disease than obesity per se. Um, we do know that people who are 
overweight and are physically active have a higher life expectancy than those who are healthy weight and are physically inactive. Hello. Hi. Are you Libby? Hi. Yeah. Hi, Libby. I'm Paula. In the past, Mum Tracy has avoided weighing seven-year-old Libby. Now, like the rest of our parents, she may have to face some hard facts. Take a deep breath in for me, Libby. Paula measures Libby's height and weight to establish her BMI, or body mass index. 54.2 kilograms. Eight and a half stone. Now, this is a BMI chart, children. Mm -hmm. Libby's BMI should be somewhere in the region of 13 and a half and approximately 18 and a half here. Libby's BMI is 34.5, which we're talking off the chart up here. How does that make you feel? It's probably a win. Yeah, OK. Because mm -hmm. I'm aware it can be a shock and it can yeah, be hard to yeah, hear. Yeah, no, no. Um, but that's what we're here for, mm. to tell you. The feedback from Paula was, was a shock once you've actually seen a professional person and they tell you as well. And it's just, it sort of hits home really fast that, yeah, you need to be doing something about it. All our children will be scanned to ascertain what percentage of their bodies is made up of muscle and bone and what percentage is fat. Keep your head still, Libby, if you can, that's it. Good girl, you're doing well. The light grey area around Libby's skeleton is lean mass. The darker outer shadow is fat. For a girl of Libby's age, you'd expect a healthy body fat percentage. We might be looking in the region of, say, 15% to 25%. Libby's body, actually about 52.1% of her body is fat. The Liverpool study also assesses the children's body image and self-esteem. So the first question I'm going to ask you, which girl's body on there do you think is most like yours? Remember, there's no the girls pictured tomorrow. range from being dangerously underweight to severely obese. And which girl's body would you most like to have on there? That one. What is it you like about that one, Libby? Um, because it's thinner. Because it's thinner. <clears throat> Would you like to be thinner? OK. Next, the fitness test. Just imagine you're walking down the road. Professor Tim Cable, a leading expert in sport and exercise sciences, supervises. Brilliant. You're doing ever so well. In today's culture, where we don't let the kids go outside because it might be perceived to be too dangerous, when they're watching television on average 12 hours a week and playing computer games 12 hours a week, we're not actually seeing them being active and, and engaging in physical pursuits. I am a bit concerned, actually. I'm worried about the heart rate, yeah. Parents don't like subjecting their, their children to anything that looks painful. You know, physical exercise can sometimes look painful. Actually, do you know what? It's normal for a kid. It's what they're built to do. Do you think you surprised your mum? Yes. Why? Um, because I've never done it before and she's seen me, the other side of me, running. I'd like you to stand on that black box, which is going to measure you. Brilliant. At six, Bethany is our youngest child, and both Mum Kelly and Dad Mark have come to cheer her on. <laughs> Thumbs up, sweetheart. You look like you're doing really Just well. Just breathe properly, Bethany. OK? What are your concerns and fears? There's no concerns, really. I'm happy with her size anyway, so it doesn't bother me. The healthy range for Bethany is approximately between, say, between about 13 and a half and 17 and a half body mass index. And at the moment, Bethany's body mass index is 26.4. Above this line is classed as overweight, and above this line is classed as obese. OK, so c can I ask, were you aware of that? No. You, you weren't? No. Does that come as a bit of a surprise? No, not really. Yeah. Yes, it does. Well, it does to you, Matt. 
You might be bothered, but I am. <clears throat> Have you seen this before? This is something, we call it the balance of good health, and basically there's five food groups here. So we've got fruit and vegetables, we've got what we call complex carbohydrates, which is bread, rice, potatoes, pasta, cereals. And then we have this one down here, which is the fatty, sugary foods. So if you look at that now and think about Bethany's diet, how do you think it compares <coughs> to that? At the moment, I would say you can probably take away the dairy and replace it with the, the sweets. Yeah, so it's a more like quarter of the diet mm. is probably coming from the high fat and sugary. Mm. Start thinking about what she could be having instead of some of those snacks, I'm not saying all of them, um, to try and re reduce the proportions of that. Yes, I'll take that advice on board. Yes, I will change like some of our food diet, um, get more into healthy food and stuff. But she's my little girl and she'll always be my little girl, whatever size, I don't care. Something interesting that her mum said um, was that she simply likes to make Bethany happy. Bethany has a lot of choice. Bethany chooses what she eats. Parents have to balance the need to satisfy their children's immediate happiness now with their long-term future. Oh. Hello. Hi. Are you Lucas? Hi, I'm Paula. Nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Mum Kelly. Kelly, nice hi. Lucas's mum has brought his nan along for moral support. Sitting here. Just stand on the scales for me, Lucas. Good boy. Lucas weighs just yeah. over eight stones. Do you want to come have a look at your skeleton? The total percent body fat is going to be about 37.7. Although far from healthy, Lucas's body fat percentage is significantly less than Libby's, who is the same age and of a similar weight and height to him. It's good that he's got a high percentage of lean muscle mass, which shows he must be quite active in his normal everyday life. But we still need to work on that percent body fat and get it lower. Lucas is determined to do well on the treadmill, but Mum's concerned about his asthma and has his inhaler standing by. OK, so how are you feeling now? Oh, good, good lad, now just use your arms. That's great. Excellent, mate. Well Fantastic. done. Quality. Sit, OK? Right. You look really good. You're right, Lucas. Good. Yeah, you're all right. You're doing really well. Are you sure? Do you need your inhaler? <laughs> yeah? Don't cry. He's going to cry. Keep don't worry. Keep breathing. Go right. right. on to run. Go on to run. Don't worry, dude. Don't worry, dude. Fantastic. You go feet off, boy. Put your hands to the side. <laughs> feet off. There we go. Um, one night, it was maximum heart rate then. OK, that was really good. Fantastic effort. Yeah, well done, Lucas. Right. Whilst I understand parents should be protective about kids, particularly if they've been poorly in the past, asthma is one of those pathologies that responds well to exercise training. Probably what happened there, he's not accustomed to performing at that intensity and got a little bit frightened, which is understandable. But, you know, he's probably accustomed to that now. If we did the test again tomorrow, we'd probably go a bit further. When you look at those pictures... It's been an emotional roller coaster. It's been an eye-opener. It's been a shock. I've been blaming medication a lot, I think, and it's not. I think medication is part of it. But I think I'm a bigger problem as well, 50-50%. Every time I just say, oh, have it. It's doing damage to him, and it's just not good, and I've got to be a bit more firm with him. Seven-year-old Kelsey has given the treadmill her best shot, but like all our children, her fitness level is still poor. You OK? OK, so I'm just going to put the speed up a little bit. Can I... You didn't have to do this, you're lucky. <laughs> The, the other one, the body scan, basically told us that 39.6% of Kelsey's body is fat. And again, we have norm charts. A seven-year-old girl, we'd expect to be between 15% and 24% body fat. If they're 28%, the class is obese. And Kelsey is 39.6%. Well, it. So, yeah, we're off the end of it. 
How do you feel about that? <laughs> Quite sad, actually, mm. that it's that high. Has it surprised you how high it is? Yeah, that high, yeah. Sometimes parents want to put it down to metabolism or genetics. They're things we hear a lot. People will vary. Some people are naturally bigger than others. And there may be a small element of genetics in it. But essentially, by controlling the food that we consume and the amount of physical activity we do, we can have some control over our weight. I knew her bones couldn't be that heavy. I don't, you know, I mean, she's not, she's not a wispy child. You know, but I wasn't expecting to be off the scale of the fat percentage. That's just like the kick in the teeth maybe every parent of an obese child needs. May. Three months after the trip to Liverpool and Bethany's still on the sweet stuff. After Liverpool, she was like eating not healthier but more balanced if you know what i mean it was like i was cutting the sweets out in the junk food and that and um but she got bored with it and she just wanted to go back to a normal lifestyle what's it like when you don't have sweets and crisps just makes us go back on them why do you want to go back on them um, because I like them. So have you given in? Mm-hmm. I give in, just for a peaceful life, I just give in. Just right, OK, and have them. Do you think you should be tougher? I should be, but I can it. I can it. It's just my nature, I think. Biscuits. Are you concerned about Bethany's weight? A little bit. But I don't, like I say, I think once she grows, she'll lose a lot of it. Uh, and she is doing a lot more active sort of stuff, so... Nah. We're even swimming now once a week. Um, I've got in more activities. Um, what do you do on a Monday? Um, I do karate. What do you do on a Tuesday? With Mum and Dad? Swimming. And what do you do on a Wednesday? Dance club. Mm. Sounds busy. And you're playing out more now with the weather changing. Yeah, it looks like summer. <sighs> Kelsey's also keeping active. I love jumping in. I like jumping in backwards, forwards, sideways and the upper sideways. She loves water. She just absolutely loves snorkeling. She's not feeling conscious about her weight when she does it because your weight goes more buoyant when you're in the water. But changing the family's eating habits has proved challenging for Mum Melissa and she's given up on her liquid diet. Kebab in, in um, naan bread with barbecue and mint sauce and fried onions. This is my downfall. Yeah, we do still have takeaway on a Thursday night after snorkeling. I haven't stopped that, but, you know. We only have takeaways now on Thursday normally. We used to have them any day. What do you think about that? It's better. I'm not trying to cook healthier dinners. It's on my mind all the time, I suppose. That it's all, you know, it's all about healthy eating and everything. And um, it's just so much easier said than done. It really is. Straddle, pike. Liverpool really did do well for us, actually. 
I've made two small changes in Lucas's lifestyle, um, which I didn't think I'd need to. But um, one of the big main reasons is um, it was having seconds at dinner at school. So he's now going on pack lunches, which obviously I can control what goes in there. Um, and other than that, he's started a new sport, which is rugby, on top of his football as well. I go uh, rugby training on the Mondays. Wednesday, I go football at school. And on uh, Fridays, um, I go play out on my bike. And how's it make you feel? Good and healthy and that. Just them two small things has made a great difference and it's showing in his clothes. He's actually dropped one's um, clothes size. need to be a proper thing if you want to play football and be like them. He's thin, he's thin, he's thin. You're determined, aren't you? Yeah. I mean, you've got to look out for those. Tracy and Libby have made some big changes. They now attend their local branch of MEND, a nutrition and exercise program for overweight children. MEND stands for Mind, Exercise, Nutrition, Do It. And it's all about sort of healthier eating and being more active. Basically just changing your old habits really to make them to make them healthy. And it's working with Libby. She's trying fruits, she'll eat melon, mango, pear. Whereas before she wouldn't eat anything. So like I'm really, really impressed with her. Tonight there's a tasting evening and every parent has to bring a dish. We've got healthy Turkish burgers. And what went in those? Minced meat and onions. Now, let's remember, this is just a taster session, OK? So let's think about our portion sizes and things like that. We're just here to have a taste of everything. At every session, the children do an hour's vigorous exercise. Oh, she's taunting you, Jonathan. She's taunting. Go on, then, Libby. Go. So what are you like at the end of a session? I'm, like, sweaty and tired because I've been doing all the activities. What do you feel like now? I feel, like, healthy and fit. There's been another boost to Libby's activity levels. <laughs> Libby hasn't had a close relationship with her dad in the past, but recently, they've been spending a lot more time together. Libby's dad hasn't played a very big part in her life, um, and now they've, they've got in contact with each other again. She's always wanted to go swimming and do swimming, so and I knew he could swim, so it was sort of an idea, and he was quite happy to come along and sort of teach her, basically, to swim and have fun with her. On a Saturday, I go swimming with my daddy, I've learned how to swim and I'm really good at going under with blowing bubbles and my face down and blowing bubbles. I feel like going in the swimming pool forever and not coming out. <laughs> <laughs> 